Mm. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a live stream just on doing bash shell exercises, mostly revolving regular expressions, uh, mostly involving um, commands like egret. Some search commands like you know, looking at a list of files in a folder, ls, you know, cd to navigate to certain folders, that sort of thing. The environment that I have is different than the ones I previously used. Um, actually, most of the stuff I do is actually, uh, especially when I'm at home doing projects of my own, is in Linux. I don't use Windows as much, although my previous live streams have been in Linux. That's because of the tools that I've been using. So, um, this is my Ubuntu environment. Um, I've created a folder with some files in. And they, they, I'm not using a UI, uh, sorry, um, an IDE today, really. I'm just going to do a series of exercises, you know, just to filter data that I need from particular files, just to go through these exercises. The exercises I'm doing are here. These are from um, a particular course, course 2041 at UNSW, at the University of New South Wales, where I'm a student. I used to be a, a student of this course. And it's about applying regular expressions, which are a powerful type of um, language, I suppose you can call it that, for uh, filtering and extracting data. Uh, it's something that I feel testers don't know enough about, but it's actually very important. I, well, I would argue that it's a very important tool to use, um, especially if you're going through log files or if you're trying to retrieve certain bits of data from the web. Um, it's extremely flexible and extremely powerful. So I'll look at the two. I'll show you the two files. Um, if you want to navigate to a particular folder, I'll just show you how to do this in uh, in Linux. Um, CD is a command that's used to navigate. So right now I'm in the, I suppose, the my documents type folder, or the uh, user users folder that you'd get in um, a Linux subsystem. So if I do ls, which um, is a command that just lists all the files and folders in a particular directory. You have all of these. It's a bit like Windows. Um, desktop, downloads, music, pictures, etc. Um, let me just pick live stream. So that's uh, where the exercise is. So I'll just type in CD live stream. And it's in a folder called bash shell. So I just do CD bash shell. You can also do, if you're in um, here, in this um, you know, users files folder, I can't remember how you call it in Linux, uh, you can just, you can navigate to this one if you know the path by doing cd live stream, what's that, bash shell. And that'll take, that'll take you to the same place. And uh, ls, is um, a command that shows the contents. It's a bit like deer in DOS, actually. Um, there are different um, parameters that ls takes. Like, for example, if you do lsl, um, this re this reveals um, a longer form 
uh, a bit like the Windows, a bit like the detailed view in uh, Windows folders. It'll tell you the size of the file, when it was created, you know, the user is logged in or created the files. That's me, obviously, Paul. And um, this here tells you that I have read write access. And I can see, I can view the contents of this folder. I'll just pick Parliament for now because it's smaller. Um, through different ways, I can do um, cat. And I'll tell you, that just shows the contents of that folder. There are two text editors. Um, one of them being Nano, which is the simplest of all of them to use. And uh, you can do standard things here, you can go up and down. Go left and right, you can make a change. So for example, I can type in And that can be saved. If I um, so the commands you have at the bottom, like where is you can do searches, read files, replace, go to line. What I'll just do at the moment is I don't want to save this because it might ruin the search I'm doing later. So, but if I do Control X, which is this command, uh, sorry, this symbol here, the hat symbol or circumflex symbol. In this context, it means uh, Control. So if I do Control X. It'll ask me if I want to save this. I don't want to save it, so I'll click no. Other com uh, Vim is another popular tool, which I quite like myself. But it it's more difficult to learn because it requires a series of um, shortcuts to remember. And some of them can be tricky to learn. I've actually got a... Uh, I haven't got it with me, unfortunately. Um, I've got a uh, like a cheat sheet that I printed out of all the um, the Vim symbols. Uh, sorry, the Vim shortcuts. That's what, um, so. For example, there are certain things like, for example, if you click Word, it'll just move on to the start of the next word. If you do, if you click Shift Word, it goes to the start of the next word. But um, ignoring the spaces, now, there's a difference between them. Um, H takes you left. J takes you down. K takes you up. L. Uh, Second flex takes you to the start of the line. And uh, what I'm pressing, here, I'll just go back. And uh, the dollar sign takes you to the end of the line. You can do things like, for example, you can move up and down using, um, so if I want to go four lines down and just do four, I think it's G, it'll take you to 4G. And there's, there's I haven't got time to go through all of these because there's so many of them and it, even I haven't learned them all. But once you do get a hang of it, it's very easy to navigate files, it's very easy to edit, and um, you can do a lot of powerful programming in a short time. It's just once you remember all the various keystrokes. Even me, I'm not perfect at it. Um, I'll just, uh, if you do colon, you get a series of commands you can do. Uh, write, this one here, will allow you to write to the file. Um, Q will allow you to close it. If you don't, um, if you've made an edit to the file and you want to close it without writing, if you try and do it, if you try and run Q without W first, you'll get some error saying, you know, save file first. If you want to override that, just do um, an exclamation mark. And you're out back into, uh, back into the bash shell. So what I'll just do is I'll, I'll use them at the command clear to empty the bash shell. So I start from the top. A couple of uh, changes I made to other videos. Um, I've, people have said that they can't read 
the uh, the text I write because of um, the resolution, and I understand that. So it's easy. What I will be doing is I'll be using quite large fonts, um, so it should be relatively easy to read. I'll work on some of these exercises. So the command I'm going to use is a command called grep. And this command, what it does is it uses a, you can enter a pattern and um, you can use that. And that pattern is what's called a regular expression. And, um, and you can put in a file name and it will search for, um, it will return um, every row in that file that contains that pattern. So if you want to look at, if you, if you have a command in um, in Linux, and you want to use a uh, uh, you want to learn more about it, you just write man grep and you can go up and down and read the details. So here, for example, this takes what's a various set of switches. So I know that if I had to grep hyphen v or hyphen hyphen version then you'll get the version number um, I want to use extended regular expressions so I'll be using grep hyphen e or there's a command called egrep which I'll use instead but they should return the same values or the same res res uh, results You can also use, you can also load your patterns from a file. You can ignore case. You can invert a match so it returns match lines that don't match that specific um, pattern you enter. Going back to here. So let me just see if I have egrep e installed. No, I do actually. It's just so. Um, like I said, I haven't used this in a while. But these are the examples I'll be using. Um, this is the URL for it. So I'll be using the words.txt file. And this is just a list of names or a list of words taken from some sort of dictionary. So if I do um, cat, or actually I'll use, another, I'll use another command called head, which just returns the top um, set of entries for or the top set of rows in that file head, words.txt. I think it's the top 10, I think. So it's just a list of those, of words from A to Z. There's another one as well called... Um, there's a command. I've got a cheat sheet on the wall to help me. Um, It's called tail. Sorry, I remember. Tail, words. And I'll... Um... Is that the actual list of records in the list of... Um... Is that the bottom set of words in the file? I think it must be actually. Let me have a look.
so you can see it's just a list of names that we pull out of the dictionary or some sort of repository. So if you want to look what man head does, just type in man head and that'll tell you the um, it, this outputs the first part of the files. You can specify the number of lines you want. So if I do man 20 head. Oh, no, that's not right. Um, head. I think this is it. I'll just return the first 20 um, rows from that table, uh, sorry, from that file. Those sorts of things you can do quite easily in the Bash shell. Now, that's that in itself is, you know, rather trivial. You could do that in, uh, you know, in Windows. You could do that in any sort of IDE. What's so special about this? Well, I'm going to write command. I'm going to try this exercise using egrep, and that'll um, this one here, and that'll print the words in words.txt that contain the characters lmn. So if I do egrep, now this contains words lmn anywhere in the in the uh, in the line, so um, you know it could be LMNS, LMN apostrophe, LMN anything. So there you go, and as you can see, it's the same as up here. And the bash shell actually highlights and colors the um, the words I put in the pattern. So this is a pattern which is known as a regular expression. And this is rather, in itself, this is rather mundane. It basically says, uh, look for anything that's got LMN in. But there are actually more and more commands you can use. Um, I'll go through a few more examples. Like for example, if I wanted to, um, um, as uh, as in um, Vim, I could check for every word that begins with the letter A, so I know that um, this signifies the start of a line. So if I do that. Actually, hold on, let me just check. <laughs> yep. So it, it points out all the um, letters begin with A. If I want to check for characters that finish in A, or say M, so I know there's a word called asim there, I'll just do M and the dollar sign. The dollar sign is a signifier for the end of a the end of a line. So this just pulls, you know, all the words. All the lines in that t in that file that contain that finish with the letter M. Now, if I want to find letters that, um, 
sorry, words that uh, don't have A, B, or C in them uh, at the end. Or so they don't. Or sorry, they or they um, they finish either in A, either in B, or either in C. I can do this. A, B, C. And this means either anything that's in the um, square brackets means either A or B or C. And as you can see, now if I just take out the C, all the ones you see that end in C should disappear in the retrieve search. There you go. Now, other things in regex. Um, Also, oh, I could do this as well. I could look for um, words that um, finish between C and F. So I'll just do C. Instead of doing C, D, E, F, which is how you usually do it, um, I could just do C dash F. And if I do that, Only words that end in C, D, E, or F should be returned. I can also... Uh, put inside inside the square brackets. If you apply the um, the circumflex or the hat symbol, you actually have very, it, it applies a different meaning. This means any this inverts this the rest. What it means is anything that's not between uh, C and F. So it'll pick A, B, and then G, H, I, etc., but nothing in between. See no examples of CDEF. I'm just going to cancel it. And if I want to, if you want to cancel something that's running, you just do Control C. If I do it there, it'll just move on to the next line. Kills whatever process is currently running. We have a look what else. So I want to find, let me, so this one looks for a shell pipeline that prints the words containing Z, uh, two Zs, but don't end in apostrophes. Now this is a, I can do the first part quite easily, just demonstrate that from what we know. I'll just do is type in ZZ. There you go. And this just uh, returns all the all the lines with two Zs in them, next to each other, obviously. Um, in terms of the next bit, it says Z Z. The next part of the question is um, that contain Zs but don't end in apostrophes. So this is how it. So there are a couple of other things that you that I would need to explain to do this. There are what's called character classes. 
so if I wanted to uh, find an example, for example, Aragua here has an A and a U, but they're separated by a G. Let's say I don't know there's a G there, but I want this word. So what I can do there is I can do A, A. I know in between there's a letter which is um, a character, but I don't know any more than that. So there are a series of um, commands I can do for this, or what they call character classes, which are normally denoted by putting a uh, forward slash in front. So um, there, we'll go through a few of them. S forward slash S means white space. Uh, D means digit. Well, there aren't any digits here, so I'm not going to look for that one. Um, capital D means anything but a digit, so that could be a white space or a word character. W means word. Uh, w means anything that's not a word, so that could be a digit or a space, or I don't know. Oh, by by word I mean a character that would be in a word, so an A to Z character. So here, let me say I want to. Um, so I know there's a word character, A W, and there's a U at the end, and there's a U. So this would search for any word that contains uh, any word that contains at least I've got if I've got it right and I may not have done it's been a while um, a a a a to z type character word character and a u there you go so I've got it right so you got wrap up raragul wamus yawud yamulka yamun etc and each of them contains A, some letter, and then a U. Now, if you want to do... Uh, now, this is an interesting thing. That assumes there is one character uh, between A and U. What happens if I want to have more than one character? Um, there, are, there are what they call quantifiers. So... Um, See how this works again. Give me a second. I just want to check quantifiers in um, regular expressions. Oh, it goes at the end. All right, that's fine. So if I do that one, so the question mark, it means um, zero or one, which means that A and U are either together next to each other or there's one character separating them. See, you, example, you see examples of one character or no characters at all between the A and U. Now the next one is uh, star, which means zero or more, which means A, which means either there are no characters between A and U, or there's any number of characters between A and U. Um, that means A could be one end of a very long um, 
word and a and u could be the other end of the of a very long word or a and u could be next to each other and it would still be returned so if i try this you can see examples where a and u are next to each other and a and u have a number of words in between as long as um a and u are in the sentence and a comes before u it'll be returned And then the next one is um, plus, which means that there must be at least one character between um, A and U, but they cannot, they can't be, they can't be next to each other. There can't be no characters between A and U. There you go. So you can see there, they've got four. They've got. Uh, there are six in total there, but you won't find any what A and U are next to each other. Okay, that's fine. So if I want to if I want to approach this particular problem. What I'm saying is there's a ZZ, and there's any character in between, but it can't finish in a um, apostrophe S. So there's a couple of things that I should show you first. There's one more thing I should show you first before I content this problem, which is um, what's called a group. So just let's go back to this. If I put text in, brackets, standard sort of um, parentheses brackets, this will, this treats, this searches for AU in any part of the text. Now that in itself is no different to me doing this, but there is a difference later on. Let me just show you what this returns. It should just return words with AU next to each other. It can happen more than once. And if you want to go straight to the, uh, if you want to just pull the second one out, you can use what's called a greedy search, but I'll, I won't cover that today. Um, so if I want to attack this problem here, Um, I know that at some point it, um, if I want to pull just the words that if I want to do the opposite and just pull the words that have got apostrophe S at the end um, there's apostrophe uh, I think this will do it. Hold on. Oh, okay. I think I have to escape it. Also, I want it to be... Uh, I know that all the words here have apostrophe S at the end, so I can put in a, um, a dollar sign. Hmm. I made a mistake here. I'm just googling something. They made a mistake. Um,
So I'm just googling something. Okay, someone suggests this. Um, like I said, it's been a while, so I've forgotten a few things. That's weird. So what I want to do is find all the words that end like this, and then I'll find the inverse of those. One thing I can do is I can start the process by doing this. Um, I can go back to my command that uh, that retrieves them. And I can do what's called uh, a pipe, which will allow me to transfer this into another expression. So if I, for example, if I do pipe cat, it will just print all those words out again. Or if I do uh, do sort, it will sort the words in some way. If I do sort C, or I think it's a count I can do, I'll just count the numbers. Um, or if I do sort R, for instance, it'll just be easier this way. You can pass uh, an output from one command into another output. Sorry, into another command. So that just sorts everything. So what I can uh, that just sorts um, the output of the egret into and puts it into another um, statement. Here, what I can do is do egret. I realize that my head's in the way. I'll move it up here.
try this. Let's just have a look at man egret for a second. Like I said, I'm just working through these exercises. Not really a tutorial as such. Let's try and look at the matching patterns. Okay. So this might work actually. So if I do So what I'm doing there is I'm put, I'm just putting in double quotes instead of single quotes, wrapping it around those so I can use single quotes inside the text. And this should reveal the um all the words that contain ZZ and finish in um apostrophe S think. Why is it doing that? So this should retrieve all the ones that have ZZ and finish with um, finish with S, I think. Let me try this. I might just wrap them more than one. Does this work? So those should escape those. Um, the um, single, the double quote, so I can use them. So that's the same as before. So this, hold on, let me just start this a bit more basic. This one here should return all the uh, the words that can that finish with S and have ZZ in them. Okay, so that works. So if I do that, which is the um, the inverse symbol, so it returns every, it inverts everything that's in here. So it should return the, all the uh, the words of ZZ in them and don't contain an S at the end. Right? So that looks about right. Um, 
But that removes all the ones that uh, don't have apostrophes S. It's not the same thing. So let me just see if there's a... Just googling something. So what I've done here is I've simply what I've done here is I've changed it so that I've wrapped the word in double quotes, which means I should use uh, I should be able to escape the single quote or at least um, allow me to use that as a search parameter. So what this does is it looks for all words. This is two commands joined together. So this one looks for all words that contain ZZ next to each other, anywhere in the text. And uh, this, this, this looks for all the words that contain apostrophe S at the end of the word, which is what the, the um, dollar sign is about. And then using... Um, the the switch V inverts them so it returns all the ones that don't have dollar s uh, sorry don't have apostrophe s at the end and it should show the top should show these so if I put this into uh, it's a head it should put, if I type in head Let's see the let's let me just do the first all right I'll just see if it matches the answer here Abruzzi Brizeni Abrizo Brazini, Arezzo, Barossi, Balshazar, Brazzaville, Buzz, Buzzell, Cassie, Chuzzlewit. His and his. What I'll do is I'll run it again. It looks right, actually. What I'll do is I'll run it again, but I'll run the inverse. So I'll complete the S's in. I'll... I'll, I'll So I'll look for the ones that have S, uh, apostrophe S, and see if any of them are between A and C. And yep, that's fine. So it has worked. Yeah, sorry about that messing about. Um, I generally got stuck because I was trying to escape the uh, the single quote. The best thing to do is just wrap it everything in double quotes, and that means I'll, uh, that allows me to use a single quote as just another search in the uh, word in the search pattern. Now the next command, the next question is um, uh, an egret command that prints words that contain all five vowels a e i o u in that order. So you know, abstemiously, abstemiousness, etc. You can might you can, you can have more than five vowels, uh, that, but they must contain a e i o u in that order. Okay, that's that's fine. We can do that. Now. Actually, in a way, we probably—I uh, probably know—and I've said enough to be able to 
determine this. So I know I know whatever it is, the first character I want is A. And I know that whatever I, what I don't want before I get to my E what I want to get to my E is anything is not A E I O U, because then you wouldn't have A E I O U in order. So in my square brackets I could put A E I O U the um and then put the invert, which in this case is the hat sign, the circumflex. And so this will only return consonants, not vowels. So in principle, I can do the same thing there. A E I O U. Because this is a uh, what they call a range. So without the uh, the hat, it would return A, another vowel, E, another vowel. But uh, with the hat, I've inverted this search pattern. This uh, particular range that only returns letters that are not that are not uh, vowels, basically. I so in principle, this should work. I think. And then that's the last one. And it doesn't matter what's on the end. So it actually it does. Um, I have to put it in. I have to put it in double quotes. So if I'm right, uh, this should work. This should. Um, oh, actually, there's a difference because here, for instance, adventitious has an I and then another I, then an O and a U. So this would not pick that up. It may contain more than five values vowels, but it has to contain it in this order. I think they're wanting a much simpler search result. So... What they're actually asking for... Also, I should have uh, specified that this would be... Um, a star. Because I want zero or or many, but and I'd have to do that for each of the uh, the ranges. Otherwise, it'll only it'll only retrieve um, words that have um, uh, nine letters. Um, what I could do is something very very simple. I could just replace that with there. You see, it'll return anything that it'll return any any letter, in vowel or not. I think the example of adventitious, whatever that means, means that you can have um, multiple vowels uh, of the same sort next to each other, as long as it finishes with, as long as the whole word does contain a e i o u in that order. So I do. So I've, ch I've chosen star because uh, star is the uh, the quantifier for zero, zero or many. You could have A, E, I, O, U next to each other, like here, for instance, I, O, U next to each other. Or as um, a single set of um, characters. So I'm thinking this should work. Oh, I know what I've done. I haven't specified the name of the file. So um, this is, um, was it words.txt? Oh, 
Okay. So A E I O U A E I O U A E I O U. Doesn't matter that there are um vowels in between them. A E I O U. Let's just let me just do a pipe, which is what this symbol is. And then um Um, do head, which retrieves the top, I think, by default, the top 10 characters, uh, the top 10 rows. So you have abs abstemious, abstemiously, abstemiousness, abstemiousnesses, abstemiousnesses, abstem uh, abstentious, that one, that one, that one. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pause. I'm just going to um, stop the stream there for the moment. I'll be back um, in a while. I'll also upload this to YouTube. I will uh, speak to you in a bit.